Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my Infinite Game Score series, and today we're going to be talking about Marvel's Spider Man on the PlayStation 4. Hello, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Mondane, and this video is part of my Infinite Game Score Review series, where I give games a close look in a way unique to this channel. If you're a returning viewer and you know how the system works, feel free to skip to the timestamp below. For my new viewers, welcome. It's great to have you here. Let me take a couple of minutes to explain my system and how it evaluates games differently than the typical review. Let's dive in. My infinite game score system is based on the theory that a lot of moving pieces go into a game to make it great. I've broken these pieces down into categories, and those categories have two types. First are the checkbox items, choice and consequence, are there choices that have an impact on the game, unlockables and rewards worth getting, game release, physical only, digital only, or both. These items gain or lose points based on the number of occurrences, plus or minus one. Second are the merit items. These range from negative two to positive two, based on the following criteria. Immersion, the degree to which a game draws you in and keeps you there. Game length, it's important for a game to not be too short or not overstay its welcome. So this category rates a game for being just the right length. Story. Every game has a story to tell. Here's where we measure how impactful the story is to the overall experience. Level design. How fun and intuitive is it to move around in the game world? Sense of progression. Are you making progress in the game that you can notice? Soundtrack. Does the music lend to the story and mood of the game? Overall visuals. How does the game look? Is it appropriate for the game? Difficulty. Some games can be so difficult that it can be off-putting to the player. Did they get it right here? Core gameplay. How does the game challenge the player? Controls. Does the game present a good method for the player to interact with the game? Replay value. Is this game one and done or can you get more out of it? Sense of accomplishment. After you finish the game, do you feel like you accomplished something? Game value to MSRP cost. Is the game worth the original sales price? Complete experience. At the end, does the game feel finished and at a good stopping point? When I give these scores, I do my best to think about other games that came out within a year or two on the same generation of consoles as the game in question. The score is decided based on what the expectations were of gamers at that time. This provides a reasonable assessment against the game's peers. The point scale is as follows. Two points is an impressive feat within the category. One point meets my expectations. Negative one point does not meet my expectations. And finally, negative two points with a category being disappointing. But wait, you say, quick math. If a game gets a maximum in every field, that's only 29 points. So why is it called infinite? Well, I'm glad you asked. On any of the merit scores, a game can earn bonus points or demerits based on good or bad performance that exceeds expectations. It's entirely possible for a glaring flaw or an exceptional performance in some fields to totally tip the scales. So, there isn't a true ceiling on a game score. Generally, these points are earned on individual items within a game, and I'll explain it in more detail in the review itself as they occur. And speaking of which, it's about time that we got started talking about today's game. When I bought Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4, I had high expectations. Fans had already given it high praise, and I knew the pedigree of the previous games that carried the Spider-Man name. Maximum Carnage, Spider-Man on the PlayStation 1, and the movie game on the Xbox were among my favorites. It was going to be an uphill battle for the game, and thankfully, the PlayStation 4 title came out of the gate literally swinging. Within the first 60 seconds of the game, I was hooked. 
The world melted away and I was Spider-Man. This was a new story in a new direction that not only humanized Spider-Man, but also the villains. Let me be perfectly clear here. When I started playing the game, I literally got goosebumps. And then I realized if they got something as basic as swinging through the city elevated to an art form, then I was in for a real treat. This game shattered my expectations constantly by exceeding them. The combat was fast and felt like you were in one of the comics. The music built the tension, suspense, and excitement exactly as it should. The visuals were stunning and truly beautiful. Finally, the story was compelling and pulled me in close to the whole thing. So should you play Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4? Absolutely. Now let's see that infinite game score. Game release. Physical and digital. Scores two points. Immersion. This game is one of the kings of immersion. You are Spider-Man. Two points. Game length. 17 hours minimum with 35 hours to 100%. And you can do random things as much as you want. A hero's work is never done. Two points. Story. A good, compelling story that introduces a young Spider-Man with room to grow. It just feels right. One point. Level design. The levels are vast, with each environment providing advantages and challenges. Two points. However, there was a technical difficulty where it loses a point for lighting issues. Sense of progression. The skill trees and advantages of each spider suit you find lends to a good sense of progression. One point. Choice and consequence. Unfortunately, there is little to no true consequences in the game. Minus one point. Soundtrack. The soundtrack is exhilarating, fast-paced, and only serves to make the player feel more like Spider-Man. One point. Overall visuals. This game is absolutely gorgeous, beyond what I was expecting, but the lighting issue I experienced docked at a point, so instead of getting the two points, it only gets one. Difficulty. The difficulty is about right here. Once you get the feel of the combat under your fingers, you are good. One point. Core gameplay. Swinging through the city, webbing enemies, and general combat make the game a joy to play. Two points. Controls. For the longest time, I kept hitting the wrong button to dodge, but after I adjusted, combat was a ballet, and I became a master. Two points. Replay value. I love this game, but replaying it from start to finish a second time is a commitment I don't have time for. Sorry, it's just not there for me. One point. Unlockables and rewards worth getting. Spider suits. Good lord at the spider suits. And they are all fun to get. One point. Sense of accomplishment. The stakes in the story drive the sense of accomplishment home. And the everyday crime stopping feels great. One point. Game value to MSRP cost. $59.99. Yikes. Normally I have issues with high prices, but this game has the quality to match the price. However, it's a little bit older of a title, and so honestly you can pick it up for $19.99. And honestly, $19.99 for the new Game of the Year edition is a no-brainer. Two points. Complete experience. Spider-Man goes full force from the start to finish and most definitely gives the player a complete experience. The DLC is truly the icing on the cake. Two points. 
RFID signals now. And that brings Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4 to a total of 22 points. Not bad. And that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.